over to him. He will clear the fog that's now befuddled my brain. I don't know. I really have no how to follow that presentation. I don't know whether I'll want lunch after that. <laughs> um, that was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Um, I, was, I saw your slide deck earlier on and I saw it. I was like, there was equations on there and there was graphs. And I was like, yes, this is going to be a dull presentation. I can follow it. It's really good. But you're exceptional. So now I've got to follow a really good speaker, which is terrible. Right. So we're talking about how we have been taking some of the real innovations that have happened at the forefront of um, common operating picture, for those who are familiar with it, how you take all that data in the field and turn it into actionable information. And this isn't anything new. I've effectively stood on the shoulder of giants and just turned it into something that we can offer everybody who's got a response. And this is a big, long-winded thing. What, what we're really talking about, what the focus of my work is for the last three years, and it's probably going to be the next five years, especially with AI changing the rules of everything, is about turning data into decisions. And it's taking that flow of data from the field, the responder, or the environmental, or the remote sense data, or the drone imagery, or any kind of sensor, and turning it into actionable information. And you've got to go through an awful lot of things to get there. And it's not just about technology, it's about the psychology of the people making the decisions as well. That's such a fundamental part of this, is that you've got to be trained to make good decisions in high stress situations. So we, we spend an awful lot of time looking at this kind of things. My presentation is about 10 minutes of PowerPoint slides, and I'm gonna take you on a VIP tour of some of the actual instant hubs that we've got and we've deployed. Um, I'll talk you through, I've got a little reveal about Express Pearl because we were involved in that incident quite heavily. Um, and I found something out about that last night, which I wish I'd had more time to prepare, but I don't, but I'll show you anyway, because it's quite cool. But before we get onto that, before we start talking about that, I want to kind of talk about where we are now and where the industry is now. And OSRL is by no means finished in making this migration. We still have an awful lot, long way to go. We're talking about how you take all these different feeds of data, which lead to a decision. And OSRL don't make decisions on spills. The mobilizing part of makes the decision. So we're the providers of data, as many of you in the room are. But the decisions are made by different agencies, made by the regulators, made by the operators. They're expecting that data in. That creates this wall at the end of transmitting it. So here I've got two examples that we'll go into a bit more detail about. We've got shoreline surveys, SCAT, for those that are familiar with it, and drone surveys. Drones are incredible. I mean, they're undeniably an amazing tool for response. They're underutilized. They've moved so fast that people are struggling to keep up with what they can do. Satellite data is also massively underutilized in incidents, just because it takes an awful lot to turn the data and your brain into something that can be actionable decisions. So there's an awful lot of opportunity for me just to kind of watch what people do and copy it and then make it my own and make a big difference. So we're going to talk about the kind of general flow of data. And then I'm going to use shoreline surveys because everyone's familiar with it. This is still very prevalent everywhere. Someone out on a board, out and doing a survey with a clipboard, with some paper, doing a stat survey. At the end of that SCAT survey, they'll probably start using technology because they'll take a photo of it on their phone, email it through to the command center and go, well done, and then go on to the next survey. In the command center, it causes an awful lot of pain because you start getting inundated with photos and you have to do something with it. We moved away from paper clipboards and appified. That is a word that I created, but appified SCAT. Um, I've worked with Rob quite a lot. I've slowly brought Rob Brown to the digital world. Um, and we have got our own app that we can tailor and adjust. And I'll talk about how we use it for Express Pearl for plastics as well in a little bit. Um, but effectively, it just digitizes the paper form and you go through it. And when you press send, it goes off into the cloud. And this PDF report that would have previously been somebody with a pen and paper gets created and emailed through to everybody. That's the first stage. That is re repeating like for like paper to digital. But it isn't the end of the journey because it causes a problem because it's so easy now to collect scats. And this is the actual scat surveys from the first day of a response over in which farm down there. So 168 surveys were conducted. Each survey creates maybe a document of four or five pages. You end up with a ream of paper that big that you then pass over to the instant commander and say, off you go, make a decision. And then you run because they throw something at you. 
So this is the big problem. You've got to take it a step further and not just look to digitize paper things, but actually rethink the whole thing and go to that decision end of the tree. Work from the decision backwards and how technology can support. The other example, and I'm going to show you how we did that, but again, I'm teasing you a little bit. Drone surveys. So we've got we've got planes. We've got planes in the sky at the moment, actually. Um, we've got drones. We've got helicopters. We've got aircraft of opportunity. You've got people with cameras now on their phones, and they can take things. And these things. Oh, I've left my phone down there, so I thought I'd show you. They're incredible now. I mean, I've got. I'm a tech geek, so I've got the highest spec iPhone that you can get. It's a LiDAR scanner. It's a 3D um, photography tool. I can create 3D spatial videos now and put a VR headset and see the beach in VR. That's a phone. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just a phone. So the technology is incredible. But again, we get this problem. This is, this is one example of a drone survey. Again, we're focusing on which farm. And all it's doing is it's flying up and systematically it's pointing its camera straight down and taking high resolution pictures incredibly useful pictures this gives you an oversight and you can see here this is the operation you can see the oil in the water you can see the slats in the board here some people are very familiar with this because they were down there you can see the osrl logo next to the other and allen logo and there's an awful lot of um, data created and then what you do when you finished it is you stitch it all together and create one big mega picture which is about a gigabyte and a half in size and it gives that high resolution accuracy that you can then understand the site. That eye in the sky is incredibly valuable. But again, we face a challenge because what we provide over the fence is a big directory of pictures. And then we provide them also with the big file, which you can see is a gigabyte and a half. And when you try and open that, you can't open it in your center. So you've created this incredible data set but you can't go the last step and make the decision from it. That's where this comes in. This is what we've been developing. Um, this is now live. So with every instant, we will deploy one of these. I'm going to go into the real, um, the real time thing. But it is effectively a hub for all this information that OSRL collects or any instant commander collects, uh, any instant commands. So, did you do? For the screen share, can we stop recording? Sorry, I just want to do this. Time for a couple of questions and then we'll, cause right. we're stopping them having their lunch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they are, because if they've oh, gotten any questions. That a lady at the back. Oh, Erin, hello, nice to meet you. I believe that the whole purpose of this, and that's why I talked to it over, is for the insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. So I believe that in this particular instance, this tool was built for the insurers, um, ultimately. So you're going to have to ask Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just made an action. <laughs> Andrew? Is there any way that the contractor or the radio person can get access to this? Instant hub. Right. Like during a spill? Yeah. Yes. So as I said, during an instant, we spin it up and give access to people to have access to contribute. So we've got, so for example, the Irish spill, the people doing scat surveys in Ireland is Ambipar. They're using our app and it's feeding through to this thing. So yeah. we, we absolutely open it up an instance to all the stakeholders of spills. Sorry. Sorry, go on. So if there is so let's let's say a spill happens. If a spill happens and OSRO get mobilized, we will create an instant hub. That's now de facto what will happen. We then we can then open up access to that instant hub and different capabilities to every stakeholder of that um, instant. So if you're mobilized yourself alongside OSRL, then you will get access. You'll be able to see it. You will be able to contribute to it. You'll be able to shout at me and tell me that you want this feature and that feature so that we can make it better for a spill. But, but, but it's it, in answer to that, Andrew runs a company called Polysorb, who are responders. Okay. So what he's saying is if he gets called out in a big spill, he wouldn't be able to access this because he's it, he he's not part of your club. Part of the net, he's not a member. It's not membership. It's not down to OSRL. Okay. He wouldn't be. 
if he was immobilized to the same spill that OSRO would be mobilized yeah. to, he would he get would. access. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That probably answers the question. Yeah. Professor, you were quickly. Just got back to uh, uh, Oh, yeah. Two yeah. Major uh, household wells. Have you managed to get enough data to predict the effect of the changes? Well, so basically, are there predictable spills? I have no idea. idea. <laughs> it, it is it is the perfect thing. It, it's the oh, I literally found out that that data set was still running <coughs> yesterday as I went. Oh, we're doing plastics. Oh, look at plastics. Oh. So there is a very large data set. I don't know the quality of the data because it's all human observational data. So I don't know, but it is a good data set that I can see a lot of MSCs and PhD students being potentially interested in. Yeah. But again, we don't own that data, so we have to look at that. So I may have just teased you with something you can never have, but I don't think so. Oh, <laughs> I don't oh. think so. I don't. Data is data. Great. So, right, time for lunch. Back <laughs> in here, one thirty.